Welcome back to another video. In this one we're going to be talking about fall walleye fishing using reaction baits to catch more fish. We got Joel Nelson in the boat and first things first he's going to cover location. Hey everybody Joel Nelson here with Northland and I tell you what fall is upon us and there's so much to talk about when it comes to fall walleyes and first and foremost I really think about their locations where I'm going to be targeting them and so much of that is dependent on the fall we have on the weather how quickly cold weather comes what water temperatures do but one thing you can be sure of is that those walleyes won't be far behind the bait and typically the weather is what drives the bait and the fish are just following so when you talk about earlier in the fall the first few cold snaps as the water temperatures start to dive out of the 70s or 80s wherever you're from and down into the 60s you get an initial push of bait fish that start to move their way a little bit shallower they start to congregate and they'll be anywhere from 20, 25 feet of water in clear systems all the way up to the edge of the weed line. And really, in the early part of fall, that's where you should be focusing your efforts. So as deep as 20, 22 feet, as shallow as 14, 16 feet, depending on the depth of the weed lines that you're fishing, especially in clear water, like I said. In turbid water, all bets are really off. They can be shallow already and up and in the weeds. Now, as we go into the further progression of fall, as it gets a lot chillier, as it gets a lot colder, big wind events come and mix that water up a little bit, you can expect fish, especially in big winds, to be right up and off the bank, right up and in the weed line, right up in types of cover like bulrushes, like uh, even cribs in areas that have those, brush where available. Walleyes are not necessarily a deep water species, especially when it comes to fall and big wind events. So I really follow that progression. I use side imaging. I use forward sonar. I, I use all kinds of different technological tools to be able to figure out what depth gradient the fish typically are in by looking for bait. When I start seeing big rafts of perch, big rafts of tulabees, big piles of shad on the river systems, I know that I need to be fishing in and amongst them. And a lot of times with walleyes, I need to be on the deeper edge of them, outside edge or just below them, because you can literally on sonar watch these fish come off the bottom and eat those bait fish. So a heavier bait at first is typically a great presentation. Now, as you could tell in the background of that last clip, we were out on a day where it was completely flat calm, for fall fishing, that's not always very good. Um, and on those days, sometimes you gotta use finesse presentations to try and tempt fish to bite. But more often than not, I found that being fast and aggressive and kind of triggering strikes can actually be more effective. And that's exactly how Joel caught this next fish. God, is that fun. Oh yeah, he's a nice walleye. Here we go. <sighs> Almost stabbed and missed him. You know, a puppet minnow of any variety is a great bait choice for fall walleyes. So much so because of the depths we're fishing. Uh, this fish actually ended up eating in just a little bit over 20 some feet of water. Ooh. That's that new pigeon puppet. And the hooks on that thing are really sweet. That treble on there is actually free swinging on a split ring. And it makes it a heck of a lot easier to be able to keep these fish buttoned. I almost missed on the net job. That thing was flopping. I still had it just fine. There was no, no way I was gonna lose that fish. Just a chunk. So again, the puppet minnow, it's an interesting bait to be using this time of year because I caught that fish deep. I really love to be able to fish deep when I need to, but be able to fish it aggressively shallow as those fish are more and more in tune with chasing bait. Next up, Joel's gonna talk a little bit about what makes the new pigeon puppets unique. So I've long been a fan of the puppet minnows and some of my best fish, best walleyes over the past recent years have come on them, but this pigeon puppet is a new bait altogether. And specifically for fall and why I find it most interesting is if you look at that thing, it's got a wider profile. It's a little bit beefier bait, which more closely mimics you know, fish that have had a whole year to grow. All of those bait fish now are bigger. Whether we're talking shad, whether we're talking perch, they've got a little bit thicker, heavier profile, both top to bottom and left to right. So that's important for matching the hatch, but also if you look at the design of this bait, these big wings give it a lot of glide. We're gonna talk about that on the fishing side of things. This big rear hook, it's amazing how well it actually puts walleyes into the boat. And even better, this treble, when it is hooked, doesn't act as something that leverages fish out because it's got this split ring. It can rotate 
and maneuver independently without leveraging that hook outside of the fish's mouth. So you've got the profile, you've got the design, you've got this hook added, a bigger hook, you've got a front hook removed, and you've got a treble that really allows for some freedom of motion. You're just not gonna lose fish boat side like is so common with these style of glide baits. So I think of it as a real winner, especially when it comes to the catching side of things. We're gonna talk a little bit about how to present this bait more effectively. Now as Joel just alluded, we're gonna change gears and we're gonna talk about presentation, how he likes to work those baits to catch more fish. So there's two really main ways to fish this pitch and puppet, to, to actually pitch it away from the boat, but it is a good vertical bait too. In each scenario, you need to fish it just a little bit different than you do a standard puppet minnow. So any cast, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a short pitch, just a little bit of a smaller cast. I let it settle down on a semi-tight line. What do I mean by that? It has a slight bow, allows the bait to glide freely but not so much freedom that it's a slop line and I'm not gonna feel any hits on the way down. These baits are beautiful in the water and the way they glide fish off and hit them on the down swing. So you wanna be able to fish any of that. Now the real key though with the puppet, whether I'm pitching it or whether I'm fishing it vertical, I used to with a regular puppet minnow do these kinds of rips. And I still do, I really love fishing it like that, but the pitching puppet is a little bit different just a little bit more subtle. You don't need to overwork this bait. The big fin on back has a ton of glide and actually what you do is you prevent fish from hitting it clean if you're overworking this bait. So it's really nice because you don't need to rip on it all day like maybe you would have a puppet minnow and you're able to impart a heck of a lot of action with just small subtle portions of the rod tip. So again, I'll show you what that looks like kind of on the rod tip side of things. Just a little bit of a flex, let it settle again on a semi-tight line. I'm doing little flicks more than I am big pulls. And I think that's a big difference. And you can do, a, you can do like a double flick on a little bit of a semi-slack line. That works out pretty well too, and then kind of settle it down and chase it down. You don't want to impede the downward motion of this thing, because a lot of times that thing's gliding off to the side if you give it line. If you're holding tight on the line, it's gonna settle out kind of funny and maybe shimmy and shake on the way down. Not as enticing a presentation. So, let's talk vertical. The first thing you'll notice if you jig it down by the side of the boat and you're looking at it, you're watching this lure, if you over jig it, its range of motion is literally four to five feet. You jig it too hard, it'll zip to that side. You jig it again, it'll zip to the other side. You gotta think about a walleye coming to crack this thing. Even with a big tail motion, it can only reach as far as it is long. So even a 28 inch walleye doesn't have a massive range to be able to go chase those baits. So you're gonna make it a little easier on them. You're just gonna do those little flicks. Little flicks, boat side. And one of the best things to do is pull out some forward facing sonar. Actually be able to look at fish relating to these baits, how they react to it. Hey, it's like ice fishing 101, whether you had a flasher back in the day or you were looking at an underwater camera. Studying fish and how they react to the bait, it's really choice. Next up, Joel's gonna talk a little bit about size and color when you're using glide bait presentations like this. Oh yeah, feisty one. <laughs> yeah, these are great baits. I, I can't overstate again how when you're working them you need to be just a little bit more subtle and this one hit right on the drop just like you'd want it to happen and that bait right there that was a 5 8 ounce bait that's the number four it's a really popular size for walleyes of all shapes and sizes As you can see this isn't a world beater but this is a great eater it's a beautiful fish and you'll be surprised in the fall time especially even really small fish will eat a 5 8 ounce bait so you know, color for me is critical on these baits. I really like something that's a little bit contrasting. We're in a body of water that's got loads of perch. In fact, at times, if you're in the perch too hard, it can be hard to work these baits through them. So it's essential to be able to fish the edges. But color, it's amazing the different shapes and sizes and colors you can get with this bait. They range from 5 16th ounce on the number three size to 5 eighths in the number four, all the way up to one ounce if you're fishing really deep systems and fishing for shad and trying to imitate that kind of look. That one ounce is a really good bait, but anything purple wonder, wonder bread, uh, I really like those contrasting colors, the, the fire tiger, some of the reds and the bright oranges in them. 
Uh, there's a lot of natural colors too, so yeah, really to each their own on color preferences, but just know that there's a, a wide palette of resources when it comes to colors. So we're gonna go ahead and box them. Again, he's a perfect eater, he'd be great dinner. That's about all we got for you in this video. Special thanks to Joel for sharing a bunch of really good information. And if you enjoyed this video and you learned something, make sure to hit that little red subscribe button down below. So we have a lot more awesome content coming in the future. And until then, we will see you in the next one.